Hello everyone and welcome to the 28th chapter of this series. If you've been following the series, you would remember a few episodes back when Sishupal was killed by Bhagwan Sri Krishna. As soon as his friend Shalv learned of Sishupal's demise at the hands of Sri Krishna, his fury knew no bounds. He swiftly marshaled a formidable army and led siege to the mighty fortress of Dwarka where Sri Krishna was yet to return the defense of the city fell into the hands of the venerable Ugrasen in Krishna's absence the vivid accounts of this siege and a few other sieges in Mahabharat bear striking similarities to the warfare tactics which are seen in contemporary conflicts Dwarka stood as a formidable bastion situated on an island with robust fortifications and ample defenses the fortress boasted well equipped barracks plentiful provisions and armaments with a seasoned garrison comprising renowned warriors the stage was set for a clash between salva's forces and the defenders of dwarka during the siege ugrasen enforced strict measures including a prohibition on drinking and entertainment activities bridges were destroyed and entry into the ports was restricted iron spikes were strategically placed in the moats surrounding the fortress while the city walls were meticulously maintained all access points to the city were heavily guarded with barbed wire and strict protocols for permits and passwords were implemented to regulate movement in and out of the city every possible effort was made to fortify the already formidable defenses of the city to boost morale and readiness the soldiers wages were raised and stringent tests were conducted to ensure only the most qualified volunteers were accepted into the ranks these comprehensive measures aimed to bolster the strength and resilience of the defending forces during the intense period of the siege finally shri krishna returned and was deeply saddened by the suffering of his city during the siege and he took swift action upon his return he confronted and fought and defeated salva forcing him to lift the siege and end the hardships faced by the city's inhabitants now i want to pause at this point and remind you all once again for i know i say this quite often that this series is an introduction to this grand epic and if you want to know more please feel free to explore more and read more and the reason i'm reminding you at this point is that the shalv who we just met is someone we have met earlier as well in one of our earliest episodes it's the same shalv who was in love with amba the princess of kashi but before amba could choose him for her husband at her swamvar bhishma carried away amba and her two sisters as wives for vichitravire and when amba told bhishma of her love for king shalva she was escorted to him but shalva refused to accept her as she had been in another man's house and the same shalva was a good friend of shishupal king of chedi and it's the same shalva who on hearing of his death now attacked dwarka and in the battle that ensued he was killed by shri krishna now once all of this was done it was only afterwards that shri krishna learned for the first time of the events at hastinapur the game of dice and the exile of the pandavas upon learning of the injustices faced by the pandavas including the rigged game of dice and their subsequent exile Shri Krishna immediately embarked on a journey to the forest where they were dwelling 
Accompanying him were allies and supporters, including members of the Bhoj tribe, of the Vrishni tribe, as well as Vrishth Ketu, the new king of the Chedi kingdom, and the Kekayas, all of whom were staunch allies of the Pandavas. They reached the forest and met with the Pandavas and the others. These allies of Shri Krishna and the Pandavas were outraged by Duryodhan's deceitful actions and vowed for justice to be served, expressing their conviction that such wickedness could not go unpunished. And they cried out that surely the earth would drink the blood of such wicked people. Draupadi approached Shri Krishna. Her voice tainted with tears and choked with emotion as she recounted the injustices and wrongs she had suffered. Draupadi poured her heart out to Lord Krishna, recounting the harrowing ordeal she had undergone in the Kuru assembly. She described how she was dragged into the court with a single garment covering her, subject to the vile insults and humiliation inflicted upon her by the sons of Dhritarashtra. Despite being the daughter-in-law of Emperor Pandu and the wife of the mighty Pandavas, how she had felt utterly abandoned and unprotected in her moment of need. She bared her soul to Shri Krishna, lamenting how even the strength of Bhim and the prowess of Arjun had failed to shield her from the despicable actions of Duryodhan and his allies. In her despair, she questioned why justice had not been meted out and why the perpetrator of such heinous acts still roamed free. Shri Krishna listened to her anguish with empathy. His resolve strengthened to provide retribution for the wrongs committed against Thropadi and the Pandavas. Lord Krishna was deeply moved and he consoled the weeping Draupadi. And finally, Bhagwan Shri Krishna said, Those who tormented you will be stricken to death in the bloody quagmire of a lost battle. Wipe your eyes. I solemnly promise that your grievous wrongs shall be amply avenged. I shall help the Pandavas in every way. You will become the Empress. The heavens may fall, the Himalayas may split in twain, the earth may crumble or the boundless sea may dry up, but, but I tell you verily, my words shall stand. I swear this. And Sri Krishna took a solemn vow before Draupadi. This vow, as it will be seen, was in perfect accord with the purpose of the Lord's avatars as declared in scriptures and as quoted in one of the most quoted parts of Bhagavad Gita, which is Paritranai Sadhunam Vinashai Cha Dushkritam Dharm Sansthapanarthai Sambhavami Yuge Yuge For protecting the righteous, for destroying the wicked, and for firmly upholding the law, I am born on earth age after age. Lord Krishna's words brought a glimmer of hope to Draupadi's heart as she found solace in his reassurance. She wiped her tears, comforted by the promise of justice and retribution that Sri Krishna vowed to deliver. His unwavering resolve to support the Pandavas and ensure that Draupadi's honour was restored filled her with renewed strength and courage.
With Shri Krishna's pledge to stand by them, Draupadi felt a sense of empowerment and assurance that her suffering would not go unpunished. She clung to the belief that the divine was on their side, guiding them through the challenges that lay ahead. In Shri Krishna, she found a protector and a champion who stood ready to uphold righteousness and bring about the downfall of the wicked. This scene captures a pivotal moment in the Mahabharata, marking the beginning of Shri Krishna's active intervention in the lives of the Pandas and the unfolding of events that would shape the course of the great war to come. Drishtadyum also consoled his sister and told her how they will vanquish the Kauravs. He said, I will kill Drona. Shikhandi will cause Bhishma's fall. Bhim will take the lives of the wicked Duryodhan and his brothers. And Arjun will slay Kurn. His words thundered and also symbolized a united front against the forces of oppression and injustice, standing tall in the face of adversity. Together with Krishna's pledge and Drishtadum's vow for retribution, Draupadi found herself surrounded by allies who were unwavering in their dedication to protect the righteous and ensure that the principles of righteousness prevailed. Shri Krishna also said, When this calamity befell you, I was in Dwarka. Had I been in Hastinapur, I would never have allowed this fraudulent game of dice to take place. Uninvited, I would have gone there and stirred up Drone, Kripa and the other elders to a sense of duty. I would, at all costs, have prevented this destructive play of dice. When Shakuni was cheating you, I was fighting King Shalva who had besieged my city. It was only after I defeated him that I came to know of the game of dice and the subsequent sordid story. It grieves me that I am not able to remove your sorrows immediately. But remember, some water must be lost before a broken dam is restored. Then Shri Krishna took leave and returned to Dwarka with uh, Shubhadra, the wife of Arjun, and their child Abhimanyu. Drishtadum went back to Panchal, taking with him the sons of Draupadi. This episode highlighted the unity and support among the Pandav allies as they stood united in facing the trials ahead and seeking retribution for the wrongs inflicted upon their family. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Mahabharata. I will see you soon. Thank you.